Alright, in this video repair guide, we'll show you how to repair a Dell 19-inch monitor. This particular one is the Dell 1907 FPV. Uh, this particular one has power issues. When you apply power to it, you get no display, no power light, not even a blinking light. Um, you do hear a slight uh, whine, high-pitched whine or squeal coming from the unit, but that's the only indication that, that the unit is getting power. So we'll show you how to take that unit apart, get down to the power supply board, repair the board, and um, get the unit back up and going. Of course, the first thing you need to do is remove the stand, the power cable, and either your DVI or your VGA cable. Just get it down where it's the basic unit. The next thing you'll need to do is remove the four screws that were hidden underneath the plate that the stand comes on. So we'll remove those four screws. These are the ones that would hold the unit to a wall mount bracket if you were taking it off and mounting it on the wall. So I'm going to set those screws to the side. I turn the unit over. Grab the center of the bezel at the bottom and lift up and twist a little bit and it will release from its catches. And you can just work your way around lifting and twisting just a little bit on the bezel and it will work its way around just popping loose as we go and you want to leave that bezel on because it's attached to the electronics for the control panel so we want to leave the front bezel on and actually just turn the unit over then you can remove the back cover set it to the side. Be sure to save the push button and the little spring in the center. That's what releases the unit from the stand and if you misplace that and don't put it back in while you're reassembling the unit, once you put that stand on it's going to be very difficult to get it back off later on. The first thing we'll need to do now is remove the front bezel. So we have to remove this little cable. It's just going to slide out. And then we can lift up this control cable that's held in place with double-sided foam tape and you just want to pull it loose from the tape be careful not to damage the cable now that we have that removed we can remove the front display now we have the monitor panel and electronics that we'll be getting into um, what we'll need to do now on one end is going to have the USB plugs. They plug into the control board. We'll just want to unplug that connection. Also while we're on the end there is two screws. We want to just remove those standard Phillips screws. Two on each end. So when we finish these two we'll just go down to the other end and remove those also. Just set those to the side get the two screws on the other end. And then you can lay the unit back down flat. Uh, there's a metal shield cover held in place with two, two more Phillips screws here. Take that cover off. Now we'll see two of the backlight cables where they plug into the board. There is little squeeze to release catches. If you have enough of a fingernail to depress that catch, you can do that. If not, you can use either a small screwdriver or a small pocket knife and just depress the top down as you're sliding it out to release these little connectors. You don't want to just pull on the cables. The cables will pull out of the sockets and then it will ruin the backlight. Okay, now that we have the bottom two done, we'll kind of do the same procedure on the top. We need to remove the shielding. Three screws on the top shielding. And you can remove that. And then we'll need to remove and unplug these two backlights. Again, the same procedure. Press down on the catch and then pull the cord out and 
they will come out. Now you can lift up this assembly. We'll want to unplug this from the control board. This little um, RF choke assembly, it's a little metal, metal-ish ceramic thing. It's held in with double-sided foam tape. You can just lift that up, peel it off of the tape gently, and then you can unplug the connector from the control panel, or from the LCD panel. This is the power supply side that we will be doing the repair work on. It's held in place with four screws on the bottom, but there is also two screws on the sides of the AC jack. Those will need to be removed. We can remove the four screws on the bottom. Now before we can remove the board, there is also some screws that hold the board through the heat sinks to the chassis. And these are just three Phillips screws across the back. Just remove those three. And now the board is loose. I'm just going to lift it up and work it out. And here's the board that we'll be working on. Um, notice it's held in place or it's connected with the multi-connector cable to the mating connector on the video control board. If you undo these two screws, you should be able to lift up the board just enough to unplug that connector. Now we have the control board or the power supply board that we will be doing the repair work on. On this particular one, there's several visible capacitors. If you can look at them, they have uh, dried electrolyte solution. It's a brown, crusty material on the tops of the capacitors, indicating that those have uh, bulged and failed when you're doing the repair. Besides just replacing the ones that are visible, you really need to replace the other ones. Um, when they start failing, these have failed. These are now under stress because having to compensate for the ones that have failed. So if you re replace just the bad ones that are visibly bad, within a month or so you'll have to go back and replace the other ones. So it's best to just do the whole board at one time and then you don't have to worry about coming back to them and doing them at a later time. So let's go over to the solder bench and we'll repair the, replace the capacitors on the board and get this unit back up and running.